So you've had a good look around the worksheet creator and you've decided that you still want to create your own bespoke worksheet rather than using any of the ones in there. That's absolutely fine, but what you need to be aware of is that there are one or two layout features, specific um, advanced layout features that you need to be aware of and we're going to cover those in this video here. I'm going to create a fairly straightforward scale sheet. I say fairly straightforward, it will look fairly straightforward once it's finished, um, but you'll see the techniques involved sometimes take a wee bit of getting used to. So I'm going to start with a simple treble staff. I'm going to double click on here because I'm not using any specific instruments. Go to the timeline and we've got our page ready to go. This text up here is greyed out. That means that it's actually just been hidden. So I'm going to go to the view tab first of all. And I can turn off hidden objects. See it's ticked there? I'm going to turn that off. They then disappear. I'm then going to create a title. So I'm going to make my text, styles, title. I'm going to call it something really, oops, adventurous like scale sheet. Now the first thing I have to do obviously is to have a key signature for the first one. So let's go for the notations, let's go for key signature, and I'm going to pick uh, E flat major, and I'll put that there. Nothing new so far, everything's as you would expect. Time signature next. Sibelius defaults to 4 4, so that's where I am just now. So I could just pick my semi brief there and then just type the notes in as we go, which would be fine. Personally though, I don't like having these bar lines between each note. I want these to be in a single big long bar. What I could also have done, I suppose, is taking each of these and hidden the bar lines. So I can go to bar line invisible. That would work. But for me, a more straightforward process is to pick a sensible Key signature, uh, time signature. So let's do that just here. I'm going to go to time signature. And I'm going to pick one from here. Now, if you think of a scale, you have Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do, Ti, La, So, Fa, Mi, Re, Do. 15 notes. So I'm going to pick a time signature of 15, 1. I'm going to, add, I'm going to put it in there. It looks exactly the same. But when I now pick my semi brief and put that in, you can see all these other rests have appeared. I can now put the rest of the scale in F, G, B, C, D, E, DOM, BOM, 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 BOM. And it all goes into a single bar. Now, next point is the arpeggio. So I want to put the arpeggio in this bar here. But I don't want 15 1 because the arpeggio only has dum bum 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 seven notes. So I now need a time signature of seven one, and this is the first big mistake that people make. They would think, okay, I'll do a seven one bar. Excellent. And they put that there, but then the problem is this here. It's called the cautionary, and it is an absolute pain because if I delete that, watch what happens. Well I can't actually delete it. It won't even let me delete it now. So you don't really want that. So I'm going to control Z. So that's going away again and I'll show you what you should do. Yes, you still want 7-1, but instead of getting it from here, you would go to more options and you would pick it from here. So you go to 7-1, but before you click OK, undo the tick next to allow cautionary. So you're not going to allow the cautionary. Click OK. When you put it in there now, it doesn't appear over here. That's the first big big mistake that a lot of people make, is this cost only appears and they cannot get rid of it. So, let's put our arpeggio in now. So far so good. I'm going to select that bar line there, and I'm going to hit the Enter key on the keyboard, and everything after that goes on to a new line. You can see this wee layout mark here. It's like taking a carriage return on a typewriter, if you remember what a typewriter was. So that's my E flat major 
scale and arpeggio. I'm now going to do the same, but I'm going to do it in F major, so I need a new key signature. And again, it's the same sort of mistake that people would make. They would go to the key signature, they would pick F major, and they'd put it there. But then you get a cautionary there. So again, you don't want to do that. What you want to do is go to key signature, but you've got more options down here as well. Let's go to there, pick it from there, but this time you have to put a tick into the box that says hide. You put it there, you don't get the cautionary there. You also need a new key signature, uh, sorry, time signature, and that works in the same way. So you go to time signature, more options, other 15, one, make sure that's not ticked. There you go, put your scale in. Go through the same process for the arpeggio. So you would go to your time signature, more options, 7 1. Put that in there. Put your scale in. I'm doing everything with the mouse just now so you can see what I'm doing. Obviously, any note input, whoops, any note input methods work. So you can do this on a keyboard, you can do it using step time, you can do it using flexor time, you can do it using any method you want. Again, take a new line. And the last one, I'm going to do G major, so I'm going to go for a new key signature, more options, G major, hide it, put it there, new time signature, more options, 15, 1, don't allow the cautionary, put that there, put my scale in. And you notice that obviously these scales are following the keys, as you would expect. Last one, time signature, more options, 7 1, don't allow the cautionary, OK, put it in there, put the arpeggio in. B, D, G, D, G. You can then carry on and put as many as you like in. Now, just to show you what I'm looking at now, I have all these empty bars. Let's say I'm going to put just these three scales and arpeggios in. So I'm going to delete those empty bars. I don't need them anymore. So I can now hold down Control and Delete. Do you want to get rid of them altogether? Yes, I do. And that's fine. I don't need all these time signatures. I don't want them there. So I'm going to select them. Click on the first one. Control click the rest of them. Hold down Control, clicking on each of these so they're all selected. And just hit Delete. And then go away. Now, I want these two, the scale and the arpeggio, on the same line. So, what I can do, select them both, go to the Layout tab, and over here in the Format, you can see there are various options. This one here, We'll make it into a system, which is what I'm going to ask it to do. But if I wanted everything to make it into a, a full page, I would do this one here. So the top one here, make it into a system. They both then appear on the same line. I can do the same for these ones. So I've now got my scales on a single line. Scales and arpeggios. And again, you don't have to worry about note spacings because Sibelius deals with that for you. I want a wee gap here. So they're, 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 they're both the same line, but they're not joined like this. So I would go to this bar here, Home tab and Inspector. We've looked at this in a previous video. Down here, Gap before bar, I always find 7 makes a nice sized gap. Same here. Actually, I should pin the Inspector for this. 7, this one, 7. Close the Inspector. That's starting to take shape now. So you can see how easy it is to put a gap between the bars. However, I've got a final bar line here and normal bar lines everywhere else. Let me just zoom in a wee bit. So, again, on the notations tab, there's where your bar lines are. So I can go to this bar line, make it a final one. And I can do the same for them all. Unfortunately, there isn't a keyboard shortcut for the final bar line. Of course you could, if you want to create one, but that's a separate video again. 
Okay, and now I don't need the bar numbers, so I want rid of those. So I'm going to go to the layout. No, no, I'm going to go to the appearance tab. And over here are the engraving rules. I'm going to go to this one, pick the bar numbers, no bar numbers. Click OK. Bar numbers go away. Don't worry about these wee blue lines. These are the layout marks. They won't appear in the score. If you want, to, you can turn them off. Again, go to the view tab, layout marks, you can untick them. Now, that in itself may well be your scale sheet done. But I might decide I want to put some text before and after them. So I want to change the size of the margins. If I wanted to do it for the entire um, sheet, the entire score for a piece of music, I would go again to the layout tab and I would pick this document setup dialog here and I can set my margins from there. But I would do it universally across the entire score. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to zoom in here a wee bit. I click where this bar line would be if there was one. This wee purple box appears. And that allows me to drag this around. So I can then drag it in to make a space there. If I want to put a space at the end, I can't click on there because the purple box doesn't appear. But what I can do, the distance between two lines on Sibelius is called this space. So if I went one space, ish further out I get a purple box I can then grab that and drag that back and forward so you can increase the size and the margins on a stave by stave basis if you prefer I can then put some text in here so let's go well that was another wee trick if you right click on the blank sheet of paper remember you get the create menu so you can go to text other staff text I'm going to do box text I'm just going to type E flat major. I'll go there. I can then alt click that down to here, which will make a copy of it. I just double click it to change it to G major. And if I want again, I can then do the same thing over here. I'm putting the name of the scale. You can put any text you like in here, obviously. And the last thing we could do is to put the note names under here. So again, let's just select everything. Go to the text tab because there's text, but it's a plugin you can run called add note names. And the only thing to change here really is the technique text. I'm going to make it lyrics text so it goes underneath the notes. There's my, my notes. They're all a wee bit too big and you can see magnetic layouts come into action here to try and make them smaller. So all I need to do is just readjust, readjust the size from there, so that everyone sits nice and neat. So that quickly takes you through how to create your own scale sheet. Obviously the techniques involved there will apply to any other type of, of worksheet that you want to do. You're just going to add text, you're going to add um, symbols maybe from the, the symbols gallery, you're going to add notes, you're going to add whatever you want from there. But just bear in mind that most of the layout problems you're going to have will probably be to do with hiding or not hiding the time signature and the key signature.